thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for all the uh, wonderful the administration and the wonderful people that work um, in this university, this college that impacts so many people's lives. Um, we uh, be with us through today's agenda. Uh, we praise the Lord. Amen. 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 To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Um, Dr. Law, presentation of retirements and adoptions. Good, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if you would join me over here, okay? I'd like to start with, um, well, we got some. Am I on here? Yeah, yes. Okay. Uh, Bill Barzin. He's not here. Maggie Knoop. There she is. Maggie began her career as a wellness instructor on the Clearwater campus in 1989, and Maggie was instrumental in developing the personal wellness course that remained at the forefront of physical education curriculum for more than 15 years. And whereas Maggie was selected St. Petersburg, Petersburg College's first volleyball coach when the team was organized in 97, she worked diligently to start the program and led the 1999 volleyball team to a 23-7 and record. Whereas Maggie shared the 1999 Suncoast Conference regular season championship with Pasco Hernando Community College and qualified for the state tournament. And whereas Maggie posted a winning record with 83 wins and 65 losses. And whereas Maggie became an English as a second language instructor in July 2002 and has earned the admiration and respect of her students and colleagues for her dedication, enthusiasm, professionalism, sense of humor, and hard work. And whereas Maggie has made many lasting contributions to her field of ESL and to her campus serving as an officer in her professional organization and as a representative to the St. Petersburg College Faculty Governance Organization, and whereas Maggie has an outgoing personality and we wish her happiness and her retirement as she travels and spends time with her family and loved ones, now therefore be it resolved that the St. Petersburg College Board of Trustees and the total college community hereby recognize and appreciate the outstanding contributions to the college and to the community by Maggie Knoop and extend to her our best wishes for enjoyment throughout the years ahead. Said resolution adopted and approved this, approved this 19th day of June 2012. Here, here. Congratulations. Oh, and the moment has arrived. I've been thinking, what am I going to say? I know it needs to be short. I've been told that. Um, it's the people. It's the students, and it's you. So thank you for everything. I, oh, I wasn't supposed there to you cry. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, you told me not to cry. Okay, I'm not going to cry. I, 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 the thing I always said was, on Sunday night, I never said, I wish I didn't have to go to work, because I loved it. Thank you. Good enough. Let me take a picture here. Thanks so much. Thank now, um, I, and I, what, what are the protocols? In, in, when I was in college, you waited five minutes for somebody who has a bachelor's degree, 10 <laughs> minutes if they had a master's degree, 15 if there's a PhD. Is that, so, so there's a, that's still in place though, right? Consequently, I'd like to ask Bill Barzin to come forward, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Bill Barson came to St. Petersburg College in 1977 from Penn State University where he taught vocational and technical education, whereas Bill proved to be a versatile and proficient addition to the St. Petersburg College faculty, teaching courses over the years that ranged from hotel and restaurant management to business technology and basic computer applications, and whereas Bill always put his students first, spending countless hours counseling and tutoring them, as well as teaching them life skills he had learned along the way. 
And whereas Bill was dedicated and supportive of the Business Technologies Department in the College of Computer and Information Technology, assisting with the selection of hardware and software supporting the needs for a strong business and computer curriculum. And whereas Bill has served his community as a certified firefighter EMT for the Seminole Fire Rescue for nearly 25 years. In addition, he has been an elementary school volunteer and served as an officer on the board of his neighborhood association. Now, therefore, be it resolved that St. Petersburg College Board of Trustees and the total college community hereby recognize and appreciate the outstanding contributions to the college and to the community by my good friend Bill Barson. And we extend our best wishes for enjoyment through the years ahead. Said resolution adopted this 19th day of June 2012. Oh boy, I don't have haven't had a class this big in a while, and <laughs> and, um, and not and well dressed. Wow. <laughs> Usually they have hats and shorts and cell phones going off, and um, but I guess the first time I decided I was going to teach, I substitute taught when I was working as a hotel manager, and um, somebody threw something at the blackboard and picked up the paper and looked at it. It was a uh, Pop-Tart wrapper. Uh, so I turned around and looked, and the kid in the front row said, why are you looking at me? Why are you looking at me? Did I do something wrong? And I said, well, he said, I didn't do it. I said, well, you're eating a Pop-Tart. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's been great to be here. And um, I used to have hair and used to be lighter in weight and <laughs> when I started here. So 35 years is a long time. And, Actually, that's here, and then I had uh, three and a half, three and three quarters in Pennsylvania before I came down here. It's so almost 40 years, a few days sh shy of 40 years, of 40 days. <laughs> so maybe I'll be back. Maybe I'll see you all again. Thanks. Okay, hey, Berniston, please join me here. Kay Berniston became St. Petersburg College's Associate Vice President for Baccalaureate Programs and University Partnerships in 2001 serving as a major catalyst in the transition of this 85-year-old community college to a bachelor degree granting four-year college. And whereas Ms. Berniston was a primary author of the successful Sachs proposal seeking level two status for the college, and whereas Ms. Berniston provided leadership to the development and implementation of all St. Pete College's four-year degrees and served as a primary contributor to the Sachs reaffirmation effort in 2008, and whereas Mrs. Berniston played a major role in securing initial program approval from the Florida DOE for the College of Education and later directed the college's reaffirmation efforts for program accreditation in such areas as education, nursing, orthotics, and prosthetics, and whereas Mrs. Berniston has become a national leader and spokesperson for increasing baccalaureate access in the U.S. throughout community college involvement into bachelor's bachelor degree granting institutions, and whereas Mrs. Berniston has successfully implemented, implemented institutional effectiveness programs at other community colleges and now leads our institutional research assessment and institutional effectiveness efforts, and whereas Mrs. Berniston is a warm and caring person who looks for ways to help others personally and professionally, she serves as a mentor to many students, colleagues, and she will be missed. Now, therefore, be it resolved that St. Petersburg College Board of Trustees and the total college community hereby recognize and appreciate the outstanding contributions to the college and to the community by Kay Berniston and extend to her our best wishes for enjoyment through the years ahead. Said resolution adopted and approved by the Board of Trustees this 19th day of June 2012. Here, here. <laughs> So. Well, I will say <laughs> She said Just before she said, she said don't, don't ask me to speak, okay? <laughs> well, it is bittersweet, and I don't know how much I'll be able to get out of this, but um, every month you come and you see people that are retiring, and they tell, say how much that 
this is their second family. Well, it's really true. And I've made a lot of good friends and colleagues. And it was really an awesome experience to have with Tom Furlong that we were really able to um, develop a whole new model for community colleges that provided so much access to our students and our community. And um, But you know, I couldn't have done it without this great community because they really are very supportive. And um, I want to thank you all. And good luck. You did it. <laughs> Susan Ryder. <laughs> All right, here we go. Kids up front. Whereas Susan M. Ryder has used her exceptional talent and skills to mold and develop St. Petersburg College's campus and learning sites for nearly 35 years, and whereas Ms. Ryder throughout this time has insisted on and maintained high standards for herself and the employees who work under her supervision in facilities planning and institutional services, this has resulted in unprecedented respect from her peers as well as from civic and educational leaders throughout the state and local area. And whereas Ms. Ryder has successfully managed a department of more than 250 employees and overseen annual budgets of more than $150 million, she has been responsible for plant operations on more than 13 sites or more than 2.4 million square feet of space. In doing so, she has maintained a personal relationship with staff members throughout the years, often step in, stepping in to assist them or their families in times of need. And whereas Ms. Ryder has brought recognition and honor to the college throughout her membership on numerous state educational boards, the St. Petersburg Downtown Partnership Board, the Peer Task Advisory Board, and the Treasure Island Planning and Zoning Board, and whereas Ms. Ryder demonstrated her devotion to the college and its students when she and her department established in 2001 a scholarship funded through the voluntary payroll deductions for deserving students with financial need. To date, facilities employees have donated nearly $33,000 to this scholarship and 55 students have benefited. Now therefore be it resolved that the St. Petersburg College Board of Trustees and the total college community hereby recognize and appreciate the outstanding contributions to the college and to the community by Vice President Susan Ryder and extend to her our best wishes for enjoyment through the years ahead. Said resolution being adopted and approved by the Board of Trustees, St. Petersburg College, this 19th day of June, 2012. Here, here. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to introduce my family to you. My son Robert um, is here. His wife Gigi Ryder, she works at the Health Education Center. My newest grandson Michael, he'll be five months old tomorrow, and Joshua who is uh, six years old. Um, I have been here for 35 years and so when you're anywhere for 35 years, most of the significant things that have happened to me have happened during those 35 years. Some of them are standing right behind me. Those are the most <laughs> significant things that have happened to me in my life. Um, and I can just tell you this, that when you spend that kind of time and go through those things in your life, challenges and happy times, that is a family like this that stands by you all the time and helps you get through it. This is the extended family. This is the way that I have, over the years, been able to do and handle and manage some of the challenges because everybody here uh, has been standing there holding your hand um, as you've gone through. So I really, really appreciate all of my colleagues that we've worked with over the years, the board members, the present board members, the past board members. Um, Dr. Law, thank you very much. Dr. Cutler, um, I started here 
when Dr. Bennett was president. So <laughs> I've been <laughs> through all of these presidents. Yeah, yeah. So um, one of the interesting things about the uh, job that we have in facilities is that we have the same opportunity to do what all of you do on the academic side, and that is to make something or somebody better when the project is all over with. Whether that be a student, whether we happen to be cleaning the floors, or whether we happen to be building a new building. Everybody really likes to see us leave because when we leave, <laughs> things are always better than when we started. <laughs> and it's been a, a, great, um, a great opportunity to be involved in a position and a job and an organization where you can get that kind of satisfaction uh, constantly in the work that you do. And, um, and I want to thank Dr. Law for giving me an opportunity to um, uh, complete something that I wanted to do here for a long time. It may sound like a small thing to you, but for us in facilities, it's been an opportunity to integrate the academic and the student side of the house with what we do in facilities. And that was an opportunity working with, um, with the architecture and building construction, environmental and engineering uh, programs at the college and having those students work with our architectural firms and our construction firms and have, do interns and work with us so that they actually got some hands-on experience on projects that we were actually doing on site. And we're still continuing that today. And I hope that we're able to continue that in the future because I think it's very meaningful for students and for us also. Keeps us reminded why we are here. Um, they've uh, been generous to set up a scholarship in my name. Um, I'm very excited about that. We um, will um, honor students that are going into building construction, architecture, engineering, environmental, and the MIRROR program, all very dear to my heart. And um, I'm uh, looking forward to working with that in the years to come. And as they mentioned this morning, one of the proudest uh, moments for me in facilities planning was the fact that we were able to establish a scholarship, one of the first departments at the, at the college to establish a scholarship for students. And $32,000 is pretty good. Um, so I, you know, I'm very, very proud of that. Um, I want to recognize and thank uh, the team that I work with. Some of them are here today, um, but really, uh, as you all know, as Kay said and many people, all of the positive things um, that we do, all of the accolades, um, all of the moving forward really is done by a team of people. And facilities planning and institutional services has an outstanding team. Um, whether you happen to be a custodian or an architect or you're a project coordinator or you're a security, no matter what you do, we have a heart for service. It's all about customer service and I'm very proud to have been associated with that team over the years. And I wanna thank them heartily um, because um, it's been such a rewarding experience to, to be involved with them. Um, thank you all very much again. I feel very blessed to have been able to spend 35 years here. And um, I'm going to uh, do some things with these folks when I retire <laughs> back here. Yeah. <laughs> so again, thank you all very, very much.
Okay, moving right along. We'll move to our comments by the board members. Mr. North. Anything? No, congratulations to everyone, and I uh, hope you have um, many happy years in your next phase. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to um, uh, take note of uh, commending the, the foundation, Frances New and her team. Um, I know that it's relatively, Frances is relatively new this year, but the progress in my short time has been tremendous. I uh, attended a social last week. That was a, a, a wonderful evening. And then um, some of the things that are coming out of the office, the, the e-newsletters and the communication, I, I think they're getting organized and doing a wonderful job. So I want to uh, <coughs> commend the, the foundation and the direction they're moving. Um, I'd, like, I'd like also um, commend, uh, I heard about the, re the reception and heard it very, very well. Um, uh, <laughs> Captain Fine called me and I was a little bit stuck somewhere else. Um, but uh, I would also like to commend Francis New and the Foundation. They're here. They're doing an excellent job. Um, also, Dr. Law, we're losing a lot of institutional knowledge today. Um, probably over 90 years of knowledge leaving the college. Um, um, you know, there's a, my boss always says, you know, if I left, he'd just put a new sign on the door and find a new guy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I don't believe that we could do that with no. these folks that we're losing today. No. You all, sh your families and this community has a debt of gratitude that we owe to you all for all the things um, that you've accomplished. Um, Dr. Berniston talked about the, how we've changed the shape of community colleges. Well, we changed it right here in Pinellas County. The economic impact of Pinellas County alone is impossible probably to to come up with a, a an amount that we've impacted this county with with Dr. Furlong and her um, Susan Ryder, I think I, I said this yesterday, Dr. Law. Um, the biggest impact this board makes is putting <laughs> buildings up in communities that help redevelop those communities, and I, I believe that of any college or any university across the country, those they have an economic impact that cannot be. You can't manifest you, how much how much it brings to a community. Um, so we're losing a lot of institutional knowledge. I wish you all well. I wish that we weren't losing you, um, but thank you so much for the time, effort, and and other things that you've given to not only to this community but especially to this college. So thank you so much. Um, we're moving along here. Um, Mr. Dr. Law, do you have any comments? Yeah, if I could, I'd like to introduce a guest that uh, we have here today. We have uh, Mr. Randy Hanna, who is the Chancellor for Florida College System. Randy, if you would just stand and be recognized, okay. Um, Uh, tomorrow, we, uh, Randy will be, ho will be uh, offering his Chancellor's Leadership um, uh, Seminar. So each of the 28 colleges has designated uh, one, in some cases a couple more, up-and-coming uh, staff members who get a chance to work with Randy on day and a half, two days of, of professional development. We're hosting it here uh, for uh, Chancellor Hanna at the uh, Collaborative Lab. So we're delighted to have him in town today. Let me take a second though because of some of the confusion last month. Um, uh, we knew for months and months and months that Mr. Brett had a family vacation schedule, was not going to be with us in June. That's why we thought we could have the budget ready in, in, uh, in May. Uh, he is not going to be with us. We, I expect to have the fifth slot named imminent. I, I had occasion to visit with the governor last week and uh, I came away from that feeling that he was ready to make that appointment. So I expect we will hear that name any day. I, they play the cards very close to the vest. I'm glad I don't play cards with those guys. Um, uh, I don't know any more about that. So we sh all is in play, and I want to congratulate all of you for the paperwork <laughs> showing up on time. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you for your diligence. That's all I have for, for now, Mr. Chairman. Welcome, uh, Chancellor. We appreciate you spending time with us. We appreciate it. Uh, month oh, we have to approve the uh, workshop minutes from uh, last month. Do I hear a motion to approve those? Motion to approve. Second. Uh, I have <coughs> a first and uh, someone second. Now, all in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed. 
Uh, motion passes. We're on to uh, Mr. Lang. How are you this morning? I'm fine. How are you, Mr. Chair? Good, good. I have nothing formal to report, but I was sitting here thinking, and, and I think it's worth sharing. When I came on the board, Susan was already here, and we only had two sites, St. Pete and Clearwater. <laughs> and just look around at what <laughs> she's had her hand in since then. I really admire it. Thank you. Thank you. Suzanne? Yes, I do have a short report. Great. Um, I'd like to direct your attention to the booklet uh, that I put in front of you. This is the 2012 legislative uh, session summary. It's a, su a summary of uh, several of the key uh, bills that were passed. There's, I believe, 20 of them here outlined and summarized uh, for you. And then at the back, at page 20, there's a chart. And if you find this electronically on your website, uh, you'll be able to go to the chart and actually uh, link to the actual bill text. Uh, so the information is here. Um, with that, uh, I gave you a three-page memorandum for myself that uh, specifically looked at three of the different bills and how it impacted governance by a Florida College System Board of Trustees. Um, so as you review that, if you have any questions, you can direct them to myself or to Dr. Law. Any questions, members? No. North, no? Not yet. Um, Suzanne, this is a great outline. Do you suggest any changes based upon these, um, this outline that you've given us? Are there any suggestions for changes in terms of governance for us? Um, there is, uh, in the three-page memo, there, there is some uh, changes in how you may um, be doing uh, during this next year um, evaluations of the president. Um, and then there's also some information there on protocols for emergency planning as necessary. Um, so if, if, as you look through it, um, this would be, you know, for our coming fiscal year. If you have any questions, you can certainly let me know. But yes, there would be several things that you'd want to take a look at that would be new this year. And they wouldn't take place until July 1, right? Right. That's correct. No questions? They're not major, uh, oh, Mr. Right. Chairman. They, they, they do allow, though, for the, uh, the, the most important one is for the Chancellor's Office, in fact, to, to step in as might be necessary if there, are, uh, uh, dis if there are issues locally that appear not to be being resolved by the boards. And, okay. Uh, that I'm sure you'll bring those to us. I, 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 you just need to read <laughs> the paper every morning and know which <laughs> ones those are. <laughs> right. <laughs> they are. They're, they're minor changes, but if there's any questions, just please let me know. Thank you. Uh, next up is uh, our reports from our provost. Um, as, as events transpire, there'll be only one this morning. Uh, Dr. White has her presentation, okay? Mr. Vito Perfect. is sick and, uh, and Phil Nicotera is actually doing implementation training for uh, some things that have to happen. He's working with some staff today. Good morning. I have the distinct privilege of working every day at the beautiful and time-honored St. Petersburg Gibbs campus. When I think of the college experience around which so much of our conversation very appropriately centers these days, it's not always the individualized student learning plan or the early alert system or others of the college experience projects that first come to my mind. Often, instead, it's various of the campus family that come to my mind today. It's the facility services and security services teams. They are such an important and critical part of our students' college experience. 38 and a half acres of beautifully landscaped and well-maintained college property. 15 buildings that would be 476,083 square feet of shiny floors, clean restrooms, comfortable offices, and classrooms at the ready. Parking lots and open common areas, as well as some hidden corners on campus, such as music practice rooms and locker rooms, not only well maintained, but carefully watched over by a very caring security team. How does it happen? How does this all work to our students' benefit? It is all about relationship. Facilities and security personnel who on their own take it upon themselves on the first day of class to be responsible for helping those students find their first class on the first day of class. Our facilities and security personnel intentionally build relationship 
with faculty, staff, and students. And just one example of what that does for us. When a crisis arises, we so easily coalesce as one team in responding. And another example, just an example. When a valued SPC partner is on campus for a planned event and maybe one of their vendors doesn't show up or maybe they change their mind on how they want things set up that day, it's the facilities and security teams who step up and make it happen for that partner on that day. It's natural for these folks. It's just what they do. And I am very, very grateful. In particular for Officer Dan Harris, who heads the security team, for Gary Gray, who is the site supervisor for facilities, for Jeannie Trimble, who is the custodial crew leader, and for Linda Budell, who is the landscape supervisor. And most of all, on this day, for Susan Ryder. Susan was here on my first day in 1984. She created and has fostered this student-centered service culture on her team for all of these years, and I am very grateful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any questions? No. All right. Dr. Law? Mr. Chairman, uh, in, what we have done is we have taken, on, in the agenda, we have taken last month's activities and put them under old business, okay? Sure. We have pulled out the budget and the tuition issues and brought those forward for active discussion this month whatever the board's disposition, but they were put this way so that the board could handle this as almost item. as a consent agenda. You've already discussed all these items. You've reviewed all these items. We simply couldn't vote on them last month. That so the old business is in that form. So that would be the old A through J. J. So I hear a motion to accept uh, items, the old business items, A through J. Hang on. Yes, I'll make a motion to accept all of those. Is there a second? Second. It's been probably moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? None. Motion passes. We're on to new business. Student success and achievement. We're not going to have that report, Dr. We, Law, uh, so we're th that's going to be That's really the budget discussion. Okay. Okay, so. So we're, we're moving we're down to item C. Right. Let me find out where I am here. Is there a report on item C or not? no? Uh, just our action required yes, on it? just action. Okay. Let me okay. Find those. Okay. Uh, item 7C, the ANGEL licensing agreement. ANGEL is, of course, the backbone for the distance learning. Uh, we will continue with ANGEL uh, for uh, at least two years. There was some concern that ANGEL had been bought out by Blackboard, which is the big provider of online learning management systems. Blackboard has made a corporate decision, though, to maintain ANGEL the way it, there is. I will tell you that probably uh, well above 90% of our instructors use ANGEL. Uh, some uh, at the low end, which is simply posting your syllabus and tests and some communications. Somewhere it's very robust as part of the distance learning. So this is a critical uh, piece, and uh, I recommend this contract renewal to you. Dr. Law, I had a, I had a question. Does Please. this committee stay intact? They I will. Mean, continuing? They will. They, okay. we, it was pulled together. We have an ongoing uh, group that, that handles issues related to the continued improvements in distance learning. Uh, this group, though, we're, we're watching this pretty closely because right. the, the announcement from Blackboard was we're going to keep it for now. Okay. Well, and with we, anything in technology right now, how yeah. quickly it's moving and uh, what's being made available changes from month to month. So yeah. Yeah. We're, we're in place on this one. What is the cost associated with this? Uh, may I, Mr. Chairman? Yes. $239,000. The, the cost of $239,000 for two years with an option for two more years at a cost of two seventy three. dollars So uh, approximately 140000 bucks a year. And we and with we haven't had many complaints about Angel. I wouldn't imagine. We do a pretty good job with Angel. It it, it it's serving its purpose very well. We have put a ton of training into it. Um, like so many other things, there's always a new version coming out. But the, we're stable on Angel, and and it's a good place to be for right now. Okay. No more questions on that. 
Boehner and McLeod, I, I can tell you that's I'm the renewal of. <laughs> you need to take that. I, we need to take a vote on that one. That's an action item. Okay. okay. So we can't take them up all together. Oh, you can. I'm sorry, yeah, Mr. I, Chairman. I, I, I just want to make sure. Since we they're C and D. Okay. D seems to be all of JC stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, mostly I'm with you. grants. Um, I'd like to take them all up at the same time if we don't okay. have any questions. If you guys want to review that really quickly. That's great. We're only going to vote on C and D. Yeah. E, we're going to have to have some discussion. This capital outlay is mostly Susan Ryder stuff. I'll make a, make a motion to move C and D. Uh, I second it. it motion has been properly moved and second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposing. Motion passes. We're on to item E. Okay. We have a presentation and we'll. Uh, this is this is bureaucracy so there's a lot of inside baseball I will try not to only talk inside baseball every college in the Florida uh, system including school boards must have a, um, a five-year educational plant survey it is the basic sense of where you are headed with your facilities planning it is the roadmap it is not a decision to build a building or to expend money or to do other it is a five-year survey that is passed on can be rolled up at the state so that there can be statewide plan. who's presenting this susan let's let's get the, the slides up there okay our current five-year survey expires on june 30th so we've spent the year revisiting the overall picture of what we want to do what if we have any sense that something may occur in the next five years, you want to get it on this list. It is not a decision to fund, but it is the, the start of a decision to fund, okay? So, so Susan, run us through the, the five-year survey and the master planning. Is that okay. Um, just quickly, um, when you look at the memo that we provided for you, a um, couple things to keep in mind. Uh, it's really difficult to determine exactly what you're going to do for a five-year period. So there's a process called a spot survey that you can come in and amend this um, survey, which we have done um, uh, often over the years. And uh, you'll probably see that continuing to occur. Um, one of the ways that we develop this is by working with the academic staff at the college here. And I would have to give a lot of credit to the provost um, who've been working with us for the last two years on the master planning, which is the basis for our five-year educational plant survey. We've um, worked with them over and over again, and also with uh, Dr. Cooper and Dr. Williams in the reviewing of these plans. Um, one of the other important things about this, if you see in the board memo in the third paragraph, is in order for you to spend money, the funding sources of which are listed here, PICO, Public Education, Capital Outlay, um, SCIF, those types of things, projects must be on your five-year survey or you must introduce a spot survey and put them on here. So it's, as Dr. Law says, it is the baseline for all of those expenditures and projects as you move forward. Um, the next item after this will be our um, CIP, which we're going to look at quickly today. And every item on the CIP must be on your five-year facility survey. So uh, you'll see that year after year. Okay, let me go through this. Um, terminology that you'll see um, is outlined there for you. It's listed in the plan. Um, this is kind of the way that it works. Here's your five-year survey. You'll see your capital improvement plan every year be based on that. And then from that, we send it to Tallahassee, and it, your legislative budget request is put together. And then there's the allocation of PICO funding. Um, there are college-wide recommendations that are put in place by the state. These are those recommendations. Everybody gets <laughs> them. They're in the database, and we put some dollars to them. Um, then what we did is we looked at each one of the sites, came up with some general site recommendations and any new construction, remodeling, or renovation for that site. That's the way that the um, five-year survey is uh, set up to present. Clearwater, again, descriptions, new construction, remodeling. 
Um, you see the library student support services building there. We're constructing the ethics and social science building. Presently, it's underway. Um, the Collaborative Center for Emerging Technologies is underway. We've got some of the other uh, priorities listed there. St. B. Gibbs site recommendations. The first priority under new construction is the student support services building um, and some renovation to other facilities that need to be upgraded. Seminole, again, um, science labs, we're doing that. That's the three items there that say project underway you approved in uh, May. Um, and then there's just some renovations. Same thing with Tarpon. Tarpon's got some construction of new buildings on it. Um, Bay Pines last year uh, in the, as part of the legislative request, we received $2.5 million. So we're asking for the balance of that this year. And again, site recommendations um, for that Bay Pines site, which are fairly extensive. Um, Health Education Center. Uh, Again, uh, there's some properties there that we uh, may look at. We've got some new um, construction recommended for that site. The existing building is in pretty bad shape. All state center, some site recommendations and work on the indoor firing range. Um, downtown center, uh, we're finishing up some work at the downtown center. Um, and we've got, uh, and working with Dr. Gordon, some new um, space that we're talking about programming. Last item on the list there is to construct the new Midtown Center um, and that project you'll see the schematic plans on today. Veterinary Technology Building is really completed. And this uh, also includes the college-wide master planning. Um, we're not presenting that today, but know in these books that um, we have for you, all of the master plans for all of the sites have been completed, worked on, and are part of the five-year uh, process here. This is a work in progress. So each of the sites has been undergoing a master planning process for their own site to do their own thinking about what the academic, instructional, and infrastructure needs are, okay? We, we use that to advise the five-year plan, but you are not approving the final master plan for any one of the sites. It is still remains a work in progress. And questions? So step one is to approve the five-year survey. That is the widest possible list of things that we might anticipate would need to come to us. There are any number of infrastructure issues on that. Uh, some are provided to us by the state for the maintenance and repair. Some are our own areas where we're moving forward. Um, again, I'm trying to make sure you, you recognize you're not <coughs> locking yourself into any given discussion, any given decision at this point. So what are we actually approving? You are approving a five-year big picture of uh, if if, if the money were to materialize, these are the projects that are front and center for us. These are active consideration for us, okay? Some more active than others. But we would still have the ability to back out of those projects at any time in the future. And, uh, to back out for sure or to add and to make individual decisions on any project to fund as it moves forward. So okay? what would be the point of approving the master the plan? Then? Well, th the point of doing that is the state likes to see the list of your priorities just in case that funding comes available for PICO and other funding. Th this is forwarded to the state, yeah. and they, they pull them all together into a system-wide master plan, and I guess a statewide for all, f all yeah. parts of education. It, keeps, it okay. keeps people from just popping up with a building at the last minute all the time. You know, we, we could come up with anything we want to build every year. This allows them to see that we've strategically looked at what, how we need to grow in terms of our campuses. What, one good example of being able to add a major project to your five-year survey is the Midtown Center that we'll be looking at today. Five years ago, we did not envision the Midtown Center. We did a spot survey, became part of our last five-year um, survey that we did. Um, and then, of course, you know we're moving that forward. So very, lots of flexibility with that. Okay, we're going to approve this. Then the next piece is actually your approval for what we're asking for for next year and the next five years. Again, next year being pretty precise, the five years out being less precise. Nobody knows how much revenue there will be. So 
Um, I need a motion to approve item E1. I'll make the motion. Second. It's been properly moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposing. We moved on to item E2. This is the um, capital improvement program plan. This is what you would send to the state this year. Items in the first column are those that would be your priority requests. Um, this form also carries at the request of the state those projects that over the past years we've been given um, facilities enhancement challenge grant money. Um, it's a matching program that the state presently does not have any funding available to match but in the past has and the request has been for us to continue to carry those on our five-year survey and on our CIP. The priorities that you see there are um, the first priority on the top is uh, general renovation remodeling. It's a category under which you can do multiple types of projects, um, college-wide mm -hmm. infrastructure projects, minor renovations, minor remodeling, um, upgrades to your uh, HVAC, your data, your utilities. Um, that would be item priority number one. The second priority is down under new construction projects, which is the student support services and uh, classroom building on the St. Pete Gibbs campus. And you can see this year we're asking for about a million five, which is planning money. The third priority would be the remainder of the funds for the Bay Pines property. We received two and a half million last year and uh, we'll be asking for the remainder of those funds this coming year. And the fourth um, would be the library student uh, services project on the Clearwater campus. This is the request that goes up to Tallahassee from all of the community colleges. The request is taken, put together, presented to the legislature, and from that they do the um, list of projects that will be funded. So if they were to uh, find $18,600,000, <laughs> this would be how we would anticipate spending $18,600,000. The more likelihood is that we'll get, uh, if we're lucky, three or four million. Yeah. And it's almost all in the renovation uh, projects area. Uh, Any questions? You vote on this every year. So we modify this every year with <coughs> conditions on the ground, what got funded, what moves up. You can change your priorities each year. It's a little bit of politics as to what you ask for and where you ask for it. Uh, but then this goes in each year. Chancellor Hanna's office rolls it up, and we have a system request that, that then gets funded. So you, you don't expect we're going to get $8 million? Oh, no. No. Eight, no, 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 last year was, I, I forget what. You got two and a half for um, Bay Pines. I, we got that, but then renovation repair dollars, we got. Oh, maybe. Two or three million. Yeah. So that's, that's there's, there's about two or three million from a pledge source that goes to renovation repair. We will probably get those. Then you just sort of arm wrestle for the, the targeted priorities. Um, you definitely arm wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Um, and without Senator Jones there, we'll be doing more than arm wrestling. <laughs> and when a major new university pops up somewhere else, it sucks all the dollars that way, and <laughs> your list is left unfunded. <laughs> Any questions? No questions. I hear a motion to accept item uh, E2. I'll make the motion. Motion is made by D Captain Fine. Is there a second? Second. So, I'm, so it's been properly moved and second. All in favor, aye. Aye. None opposing. We'll move on to item E3. Let me tee this up. As we have new projects coming over the horizon, we bring to the board uh, at, at uh, two or three points schematic designs, key issues so that you understand what the nature of the project is, what the scope of the project is, how it's unfolding. Uh, so this would then be the new uh, Midtown Center that had been approved. Um, uh, we've discussed it several times, but we are now just about ready to, uh, to 
start construction. It will start in the fall. We wanted to give you an update as to where things are and what the next steps are. So uh, we have uh, representatives from Harvard Jolly and then, of course, uh, Provost uh, Dr. Kevin Gordon uh, to help make this presentation. Uh, um, let me introduce to you um, Bill Harvard with Harvard Jolly Architects um, and Chad Jones. Um, Chad is our uh, project architect working with us on this and of course um, uh, Mr. Harvard's overseeing the entire process. Dr. Gordon and I have been working, he will tell you, for uh, months. Um, he's been really great about his time and, and uh, the time of his staff in working to get these floor plans uh, where you will see them today. This is the first phase of a three-phase pro process. So what you'll do today is look at and review the schematic plans, which are the phase one, which are the phase one uh, plans for this entire project. Um, included also is a site plan. This is a new site plan. We've received the uh, information back from Swift Mud, so we're moving forward on the development of the site. It's in conjunction with the Johnny Ruth Clark Health Center. We've been working very closely with them, so this is the rework of the parking that will service both of our facilities jointly. Um, with, whoops, sorry. Um, with that, yeah, let yeah. me um, turn this over to Chad and have Chad and uh, Dr. Gordon quickly go through the floor plans and the explanation of spaces for you. I have to push this right here. Kevin, you're up. Okay. Um, all right, I'm having trouble seeing this. All right, well, we'll start. Uh, first of all, let me just kind of introduce how we came to this. Um, we did several collaborative labs where we got some input from the community and, and really asked them what are the types of things they would need or want to see in partnership with us in terms of putting this building together. Uh, so we took that input and I also met with my staff uh, since we were told, all right, you got to define all spaces in the building. So we got the schematic out and we put stickies and wrote all the different things that we thought should be in the building for each floor. Uh, and so that kind of bubbled up into the Ed Spec sheets, which also went to Susan, which went to the architect, and then they started to lay out the building. So what you see on the first floor is the re result of all that input from the ground up. And at the very top there in the left-hand corner, you see a community room, uh, which, which Can we comes. Can use your pointer if you have one, okay? Very tough. There we go. Right. right there is a community room, and that was something that uh, we got input from the community, and this will allow us to hold community events there, community meetings uh, from within the community. Uh, here is a proposed bookstore. Our vendor is Barnes & Noble, uh, so that space will allow us to service students and they'll be able to get their books right there on campus. Currently, they have to go to um, either St. Pete Gibbs or come downtown to our makeshift bookstore to, to get their books. Over here, we have a food prep area. Uh, this will allow us to service here. If we have some events that require food, they're able to prep there. Uh, of course, the restrooms, those are self-explanatory, and this is a mechanical room. Here, in this area here, is the student services area. We have um, various offices where they'll be advising going on. We also have a <coughs> testing center here as well. And this is the registration desk. So this will be the first point of contact if, as folks enter. And here, this is planned open space. One, one of the big things we want to do uh, in this building is for uh, not only to be open use for the public, but the ability for learning to be seen as you walk through the building. So we have here open use computers for the public, and here we have business development computers for those that are need uh, computing or printing or copying services that's going to be available right here. As we move this way, we move into the, the, uh, the learning center. Um, this is going to be a, hopefully some sort of accordion glass type structure that um, can be opened and access uh, will extend all the way out into this atrium area. 
what you see here, we've got the, the open use computer lab for students here. This is a, a youth area uh, where youth from the community will be able to come in and this will be uh, in partnership with the city library system where they put on some programming for youth here as well. These are stacks and I'm asking that uh, these particular stacks uh, be uh, mobile so that that face can be reconfigured and redefined as we need to shift things around to do different types of learning activities in, in this area. And then this is just general seating here and uh, tables here. This is a private study area uh, for folks that are going to need some quiet space to study. And here is the learning resources area. For here you have math and over here you have writing. Each area has um, designated computer space, uh, computer slots for students that need to get on to do writing types of activities. And here for the math, they'll, they'll have access to different types of math programs that they will need there. Back this way are some offices for the learning resources area, and here is uh, the facilities access. Good morning, members of the board. I'm going to backtrack for a second to take you back to the site plan. Um, you see uh, the building footprint in relation to the Johnny Ruth Clark uh, Center and the new parking, proposed parking. Um, there will be uh, access, uh, access from the street, 22nd Street here, as well as from the parking uh, lot. So you'll see uh, a dual uh, entrance, as you see on the first floor plan. Um, this first floor is a, co a collaboration of community spaces and learning spaces um, that will act in conjunction and members of the community will be able to uh, intersperse and share their energy with uh, students who who will be um, learning. Um, the second floor you will see office um, office suite sorry. Oops. Apologize for that. Um, <laughs> You will see office suite for the faculty as well as uh, student office suite, um, as well as some classrooms. Um, the, the big driving space behind the building, though, is the central atrium space that would be communicating for all three floors. Um, and the intention behind that is to allow uh, the community to uh, see and, and inherit that uh, energy that's going on through, uh, throughout the building. Dr. Law, I have a question. Sure. Um, I understand on the first floor why we have this big community space, but on the second floor, I would think that we need to maximize um, um, classroom space. Is, is that not, could that not be utilized for more classrooms on the second floor? On the first floor, I, I really get it. I understand we're, we're trying to integrate to the community, but the second floor, I think we should probably maximize the amount of classroom space that we can get into the entire building with the growth. I mean, um, um, it, the community space on the second floor, you know, we don't want, it, I think it would be, a secu I, I would talk security, but I would think for security purposes, you don't want everybody integrated up on the second floor from the community. You'd much rather have them on one floor where you can, can control who's actually going to class and who's not. You, you have, uh, you, I think your, your guidance is good and we'll, we'll, we'll uh, drop back and, and take a look. One of the one of the things that I've asked them to be mindful of is you need some casual circulation space for students. I mean, they're not always in a classroom, and you need, you know, it's a confined building. I, I'm not sure about the atrium, whether definitely that's, agree that, that's that. the part of the space. I definitely agree with your okay. assessment. Okay, good enough. Look, we'll, we'll, that's the purpose of today's meeting, uh, Mr. Gibbons. Okay. Okay, on the third floor, um, as you will also see that this floor will be made of mostly classrooms um, surrounding this central atrium space that will be communicating in a part of um, all three floors. Um, you will also notice that there are certain classrooms that are designated to be collaborative classrooms, uh, which will allow for uh, moving walls that will allow uh, the classroom spaces to be utilized as a part of that central atrium space or uh, meeting room for classrooms uh, for students after hours. Um, and also, uh, in terms of the security, we um, designated these two, two stair towers that will be um, uh, able to be locked from uh, the first floor um, after hours. And these uh, also the uh, elevators, which will also 
address that as well. I still have a question. I'm not sure that I understand this. So you have an open breezeway basically through the center of the building? Yes, sir. And what, what was the thinking? I mean, it seems like you would want to have a, the maximize your classroom space like uh, Devon was saying. So why wouldn't you have that closed off on the second and third floors and filled with classrooms? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, actually, I, actually, you know, it, I'm Bill Harvard, and I want to, you know, thank you all for this opportunity. And I think it's a really good opportunity to express, you know, 21st century learning in this in this community. And 21st century learning is more about collaboration and multitasking, you know, with our with our young students than it is about, uh, you know efficiency in space because you know if if they can uh, do project-based learning and do do the learning having a, a learning environment they uh, you know are much more effective at participating in the 21st century so that's this is the the trend now you know we can you know readdress it we can talk about being efficient uh, but this is kind of the the uh, the modern way of, you know, getting students involved in the community. I, I, I probably misunderstand it then. What, because uh, uh, how does this design lend itself to collaborative thinking? Because uh, they, okay. go ahead, you, yeah. <laughs> you explained it. <laughs> so um, as you see, th this would be the uh, typical classroom setting where um, it would be lecture type setting where students would face uh, the, the front of the classroom and, and that would be something that you know these computers would be hardwired uh, in the traditional setting. Um, th this is similar type of space with a similar type of furniture um, however th this furniture will be able to be rearranged and more into um, collaborative stu studios or working environments that will also be able to lend into the more uh, larger collaborative space that Will be uh, that will function throughout the uh, throughout the building, uh, and this this is something that would be uh, up to the professor whether or not that's open and communicating, or whether that's closed off into the more traditional classroom. But that flexibility is what um, is the driving force behind the whole 21st century um, thinking or or, or learning. Um, yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say I guess I concur with my board members that. I, I get 21st century education and the idea I don't don't get the, the levels I mean going out to the open you know foyer or the the, the public area is, is great and the flexibility is great but lending itself to floor by floor by floor the yeah that seems to me a lot of square footage that could be used for more functional it does. It's uh, almost space. like, yeah, I can't, I, I'm still not clear how having <coughs> the opening between the floors increases collaborative learning. It looks like the other designs are good. I, I you know, I, but I'm not sure about the opening between the okay. floors. It, yeah. Um, what do you think? Ellen? Well, no. I, 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 I hear what Dr. Law is saying. We do have to have space where students can congregate. Um, I just don't want us to do something different than we've done on other campuses. Uh, Seminole campus, for instance, has a lot of outside space as well where students can congregate. Um, Gibbs has that. We should do some of that outside, but I totally agree. Listen, we're putting this building in Midtown. I don't want it to look like a jail. It needs to look like an educational facility. That's number one. So I understand some of what you're doing, but in terms of maximizing space, we're not going to be able to come back here, Dr. Law, in five years and renovate and put more you know, classrooms. We better maximize the okay. amount of classroom space that we can get now so that if we do grow, and we've seen major growth in Midtown, that if we do grow, that we're able to make sure that we're, we don't have to come back and spend a lot of dollars on changing things. I like the idea, if, if, we, if, if, if the idea of having furniture that can be moved makes it um, more community or collaborative type classroom, then let's look at doing more of those within the facility so that we have more seats if we have to expand the classroom space. Dr. Gordon is not going to get any more money for a very long time. We know that um, for, for this building. So we better make the best use of it that we can now. That's just the thinking that I Let us pull back and, uh, you know, we're, 
this perfect input. Uh, yeah. There's an aesthetic component that, exactly. that okay. you, you know, we're going to build something in a community for where aesthetics are going to matter a great deal. So when we're finished, we want to have something that, that is a, brings brings a, an aesthetic sense to students. I, I think you're right, though. We better maximize every square foot. Yeah, uh, and, 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 and that's what you've been talking yeah, about is, so. is our growth. You know, if we're going to grow, and this is one of our growth areas, we've seen it. We, I think we need to make sure that we have enough classroom space to grow into. May, may I interject? Let us, let us, uh, I'm just Kevin, please. Uh, the open space uh, does a couple things. First is, is not a new concept. We have it at downtown um, where that area is open. And it, it also allows some natural light in the building uh, once you get above the, uh, the first floor. Uh, and I'm not sure how many additional classrooms you get out of that once you start moving the elevators and stuff, because then we're going to have to start moving stuff around. And we'll lose some of the um, open space that students will have to be when they're not in classes. Let, let's, let's, uh, let's, look let's, let's pull back, and then uh, we'll, we'll bring it back next month with, uh, with revisions. Okay. While we're on that, Dr. Law, would you indulge me for one second? I, Please, you I and I had a... And, and board members, you and I had a conversation about, um, I had a, a, a dinner with the governor and he told me he was holding me, holding me personally responsible for the cost at St. P. College in terms of education. I would also ask if we have one more, oh no, he, well, that's he was a serious. Relief. We're off the hook. <laughs> yeah, okay, <that's laughs> thank you. Yeah, I was like, so, I, was like I, I don't know how you're going to do that because I can't write a check for it. So, <laughs> um, uh, but he, he was pretty <laughs> tough on me about making sure that, um, you know, he went to community college. He went through the whole litany of saying that he went to community college. Uh, we need to be able to let every and anybody get into community college and get start in education. And I'm sure he shared that with you sure. as well. Um, I would like for us to also just look at how we're going to fund this again. Okay. Because he made specific reference to making sure that we cut costs. And I ran a little analysis. I'm not by any means necessary a... Um, cost analysis uh, professional, but we ran a little report based upon what bonds are going for now, as opposed to sale lease back, as opposed to other things. I would just like for us to look at all of the board have an opportunity to look at that one more time before we actually go to construction. Because when I ran the sale lease back portion, we own the building faster and we saved like $2 million over the term of the bonds that we're, we're talking about utilizing. I just want us to be able to have everything out on the table before right. we go to construction to say we looked at every possible analysis, we looked at everything, and, and we're comfortable with going whatever route that is. I, I, don't have, I don't have any route that I'd like to take more than another one, but I do want everybody to have an opportunity to look at that, and I'll get you that analysis so you no, can no, and spread and it among, uh, amongst the board members. But I took that seriously because if $2 million is a lot of money over a term of a uh, over term of this building and I want to make sure that if we have an opportunity to save that two million dollars that we can do that or four million or six million whatever that is but if we could look at if you could have somebody Susan maybe come back or whoever we, we come back with an analysis of all the concepts again so that we can look at them well I really want to tee that discussion up for the board because it, yeah, so it you know we have people who do this every day for a living and and business people Miss North and, and and Kevin Fine and others uh, and and i uh, you know, even in my private life, borrow money or pay cash. Where do you want to be? You can borrow at historic lows, but you're still borrowing. If you've got the cash and you pay for something, once you pay for it, it's gone. You don't have the cash to, to fall back on. And and I don't think it's all that different in figuring out this, this part of it. As you remember, Mr. Gibbons, we ran really hard with uh, some, some planning that we did, thinking that we would do some sort of lease back uh, so that we could save our money. And then as it turned out, we decided, uh, given some other political realities, you know, using some of our funds to yeah, to build exactly. this was a, a perhaps a, a better idea. I'm willing to bring it all back to us. I, it, that was my plan, really, okay, is to and the only reason Worry I say on that is, only reason I say that, uh, Dr. Law, is it was specifically brought up by the governor. I'd like to us to I'd like to be able to in confidence say to him, we looked at every possible avenue of how to fund these facilities, whether it's this building, the library, whatever. We looked at every possible avenue, and here's what we came up with as best alternative. Yeah. Uh, we'll, I'm ready for that discussion. Today was really to, to try to get, you've given us input on schematic. I really don't want to go much further because we're, we're going to have to come back with either better answers or. 
no, no kick it over to next month just yeah. just take let, it let us take it back yeah. and we've heard what you said let us try and put a combination together of continue to keep some collaborative spaces look at the 21st century learning let's get a little skylight relief in there yeah. so so you don't have these buildings that look like they're going like no. this we want this to be a signature building both outside and inside um, and then see how much more uh, academic space we can put in there. Susan, I love that. I love the outside light, the, the, the natural sunlight coming in the building. I just want to make sure, as you know, funds may not, <laughs> they're not going to increase anytime soon. Right. And if we're going to, we just need to maximize our space yeah, here. We can do that. Let us uh, work on the plan. We'll bring it back to you next month. Any more comments from the board? No. Not I, I have one. I'm oh. still not clear about when you distinguish between collaborative and non-collaborative learning, how does the architecture impact? I, I'm not sure that I understand fully how this design adds to collaborative learning. I, I'm, I'm just not catching it. But um, I, I think one of the things that's a little bit different about this design than a normal uh, classroom situation is that you have a number of walls that can actually fold up or fold out and you can and you can put classrooms together you can move furniture around you can set up small learning pods for students to work in we we see at our sites students getting together everywhere in the hallways we put tables and chairs and there's a lot of activity going on in that particular arena the second floor and the third floor here are student spaces, student academic spaces, public mostly on the first floor, that's the plan, so that you'll have a lot of flexibility to flow out into this area with some of those learning spaces, pods, um, and to do some collaborative type of learning. But if he opens up one of these rooms at the top here to the left, my left, mm -hmm. I guess you're right, if you open that up and you're teaching out there, wouldn't that disturb the other classroom spaces around you? I mean, because that's going to is that loud or not? I'm, See, I'm asking. I, I think what's happening, if you go look at, at, our spa at our spaces and how the students are working and looking and, and the assignments, and I'm speaking for the academic side, which I probably shouldn't be doing, but... Um, you, you'll see students working that way all the time. I mean, you can go down to the downtown center. Um, Dr. Gordon's asked us to put more furniture around, and you can see students working that way all the time. I think here at this center, uh, you may see a lot of that. You may see individual um, tutors helping students in small pods, and, and um, but it is the it is the flexibility here that allows you to do both things i think we would be remiss not to provide you with an opportunity to do more collaboration and and provide and if we just give you a facility with hard walls and you have no flexibility whatsoever in dealing with that i, I guess my question is that along with the explanation wouldn't it make sense then not to have the to have more floor space in yeah. there i mean uh, a compromise yeah. that maybe the center atrium and right. just floor the other right. two and you would accomplish I think, what everyone is saying here. Correct. Yeah. I think so. Good Sorry. catch. Right. Yes, okay. Good. something like All that right. would probably work well. Uh, Mr. North, you done? Yes. All right, Mr. Well. Chairman, um, so we're going to pull back item E3. Let's pull back item E5 too, which was the, th that was just the criteria for the construction manager at risk, but let's have that discussion when we have the funding source sure, there I mean, too at the same time, okay? Again, we weren't recommending, but I want the board to understand okay. here's how we're gonna go about the process of identifying. That's been an issue okay. of, of having right. to do that. If you'll, we'll pull both back, we'll do it next month. N no harm, no foul, I'm, okay? Yeah, I'm following that. I would like you to accept the uh, e downtown center for four. That's a substantial completion item for the start of school, so I, I don't think there's anything so we're, we're going to take a that. motion for item E, one, two, and four. Is that it? Yes, sir. Do I hear a motion for item E, one, two, and four? In fact, I think you've done one and two. Yeah, we did. Okay, I'm sorry. So you four. just need item four. Item four. E four. I'm sorry. And what are we accepting? 
Oh, I'm sorry. We can we can produce it. it. It is just the final part of the downtown campus where we renovated the the, the street level for the the entry. It's the end of a project cycle there. So at our downtown campus, we retrofitted for students intake process for the counseling area, for student flow kinds of things. Do we have a, a display, Susan? On let's place the dirt was still. That was the word. The dirt was still. Yeah. That was inside the building, the dirt yes. was still yeah. there. Right, yeah. Yes. Okay. This, this is a it. pretty small project. Yeah, and we're just and closing that out. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'll second that motion. It's been probably moved and second. Uh, item E4. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks. None opposed. We move on to <coughs> agency billings. Uh, item F. Which I don't think we have any questions. Uh, no, this is a uh, yeah. this is a road item. Uh, we in order for us to to allow for third party buildings, the board has to pre approve that yeah. these are agencies who we can uh, bill for. We can they support it. students and we send them a bill for the students. You can have a motion for item F, please. I make a motion to approve. So properly moved. Second. Second. Second by Mr. North. All in favor by saying aye. Aye. None opposed. We move on to item G, human resources report. Is there any reports for that, Dr. Law? I think it is the normal range of. Um, of uh, those kinds of things uh, for uh, G1, uh, that is really just the monthly mm -hmm. flow. You see, uh, we're starting to hire the supplemental temporary. Those are the adjuncts, instructors uh, getting set for the fall mm -hmm. semester. Um, for I, I, I have a question only on. Please, uh, would you just have somebody briefly explain so that these are new board members? I don't know if they've been through the adoption of the salary. Um, item D. Yeah. Okay. I, I was going to work. Just. Oh, make, sorry, I was going to take. Just going to walk okay. through them, and then, Mr. Chairman, I'll take them however you want. Fine. Okay. Go so ahead. B is uh, is the normal range of annual appointments. Those are not faculty annual appointments. Those are administrative, managerial, and professional, and we do those. Uh, those get reappointed at at this point. Okay. Um, for uh, I'm going to move then to the. Um, See the classification and salary study uh, we have now concluded. We've been at that for the better part of a year. Um, we have a presentation, and, and I'll, uh, we can walk through as much or as little as you want. Let me tell you what we did. Every classified staff employee filled out a position description questionnaire, reviewed by their supervisor. We hired a group, uh, a national uh, consultant called Fox Lawson, who then uh, evaluated each of the job duties of every single classified employee. Uh, for the, with those, we then confirmed that this was the work people actually did with interviews and, and follow-up. Through their good work, we uh, were able to say what's a more, th this, it, it's been a while since this was done. Uh, my goal was to make our system much more understandable and streamlined. We will be reducing from 130 odd position uh, titles to 60 something position titles so that people who process information, whether it be financial or student, are on the same levels. We then use these folks to evaluate jobs across all kinds of spectrum. They have a way to weight jobs that are based on amount of supervision, amount of decision-making responsibility, and some other form of criticality so that every job is weighted uh, appropriately across our institutions. So for internal equity, all jobs were then re-weighted, realigned, re-slotted into this, the salary schedule. We then, the last piece was to take, we did 24 of the 61 categories, but it was m way more than half of the employees to do a market survey to say where are we vis-a-vis -vis the hiring market in the area. Now these are classified, so, so it's not going to be a national market, it's going to be a local market, right? These are sectorial, grounds, tradesmen, those kinds of things. And we found that we were um, highly competitive. In fact, on a cash basis, we were just ever so slightly below the, the statistical market, but our benefits package clearly outweighs uh, the normal range of benefit packages. So uh, the final analysis then was that we have, I can tell you today that I have reviewed that every position is weighted fairly across all job classifications and across all, all uh, instructional sites and that we are competitive in the market for both hiring and retaining our employees. Along the way, 
some number of employees got re-slotted. So we will spend about $100,000, maybe slightly more, to move some people had been brought on at secretarial positions where they were being, it was well below the, the, the value of the job, okay? It had nothing to do with the individual. We simply weighted each job as to its responsibility. Um, you know, some handful of folks will get, and it's a little more than a handful, it, it's probably about 100 people will get, some will get as little as $8,500, uh, excuse me, $85, uh, some will get uh, something that, uh, that approaches 100 bucks a week. So they were two or three grades below where the position weighted out. Very few of those. I, I'm willing to, we, we've got plenty of detail. We've been at it for a year. I've gone as slowly as I know how to be sure that staff at every phase understood where we were so that they have confidence in the final outcome. When you talk about people's salary, you should expect that you'll get their attention. Uh, they'll close questions, concerns. Uh, I think now I can tell you that any differences we see will be supervisory level differences and that's our next issue is to review the quality of our uh, consistency of our supervisory efforts across all the campuses. So. Um, Members of the board, I, we, it, it's taken us a long time to get here, but I'm comfortable today that my two goals were to be able to tell you positions are weighted fairly across the institution and that we are positioned in the market in a competitive place, and I think both of those have been accomplished. Okay. Any comments? No. I, I have some yes, sir. So, uh, total, payroll, uh, total payroll is how much, Dr. Long? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the, the total, I won't, uh, my only hesitation is because I don't have off the top of my head for the classified staff employees, right? You don't want the faculty in that. You, yeah, well, actually, oh, you, I'm actually. You want everybody. Yes, I'm actually interested in what your total increase in. 24 million. Okay. 24 million for this group, okay. And what was the increase you're asking for this year uh, in salaries? Oh, $100,000 in adjustments. $120,000 investment. I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir, it's, uh, I, and I appreciate the, the chance to clarify that. Um, th these are really re-slotting of a handful of positions at, that over time had been mis-slotted. Mis oh, that's a good job and a softening tuition uh, economic environment. That yeah. is a, uh, a very good okay. job. Well, anything? No, fine. Uh, yeah, right. Is that an action item? No, yes. it's information. information. You know, Dr. Law, one, right. one quick thing. I, I appreciate you doing this, the desk audits. And this is, this is important because people over time, their jobs change, and we don't recognize it. Um, and this way, we, we were able to recognize it. And Fox Lawson is an excellent group. They're probably one of the best in the country to do this. So um, uh, you're to be commended. You and your staff be commended on, on a good job with that. We now have a way to, when we create new positions, to, to, to weight them so that they, they continue the, what, what's an equity issue. You sure. know, in the past, it was who was making the ask is all too often what the, the final result was. So anyway, I feel, I feel that we did the right thing. I, I have, staff have been very patient with us to go through this. We've been patient to answer their questions as well. So I appreciate your, your guidance. That leads us then to the, uh, Mr. Chairman, to D, the adoption of the salary schedule. Mm -hmm. And you see that um, attached here. Would someone oh, yeah. call that up, Doug? Are you going to get the salary schedule up for me, please? No. That's fantastic. Yeah. Interesting. Mr. Chairman, you have, um, well, let's, where are we here? Well, uh, based on what you, you said, yeah, I think we can I go forward I think you can adopt D1, adoption okay. okay. of forward. the salary schedule for 2012-13, uh, uh, item D1. Where, what's going on? Doug? We think you're fine with the way you already explained it, Dr. Yeah. Howard. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, thank you. We have it. We're good to go. All right, then we're going to, thank you. Yeah, I'm let's sorry, Mr. On. Chairman. Let's go ahead and move on to Do you want to make a, take the vote on that, okay? Let's go ahead and take them all up, then we can just, do them very quickly at one time. I'm fine. That way Doug can get his report in and we can 
then we're down in the ways on the on the uh, on the agenda. All right, Doug, are you ready for the financial report? Yes. Please go. Okay. Good morning. Somebody changed. Uh, as we're we're getting very close to the one more month to go in the in the fiscal year, and you can see that uh, from last month we continued with the the uh, downward trend in the tuition for the summer mm -hmm. session, and we ended May. You can see there that uh, on the expense side, we we were holding spending, we were cutting some spending back, and. Um, we actually got it to drop down to where we're, we're concerned that we would uh, that those dots would cross. We went ahead and did a projection into June just to give you an idea because it's relevant, I think, to the budget discussion. Uh, we know we're, there's very little tuition will 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 come in in for uh, for the month of June. It's mostly just our state funding. And, and so that's, that's a pretty accurate number. We anticipate, uh, again, keeping our spending down. And we think we're going to come out just about right on uh, at the end of the year in terms of our revenue and our expense. I want to, on, the, on this detail slide over here, want to show you up here that in our budget, we projected at the beginning of the year about 62, a little under 62 million in, in revenue, projecting about flat enrollment. We will land just a little over 57 million. And again, when we get to the budget discussion, you'll see that, that much of what we're talking about in our uh, revenue projection for next year uh, it needs to, uh, to address that particular gap. Down here at the bottom, you see our current surplus is about 5.4 million. So that 5.4 million surplus combined with the about 6.5 million in state revenue that we will get in June we'll cover our approximately $11 million worth of expense for, for June. So we'll, we'll come out uh, just about on, on target. But we, we think we're, we're in pretty good shape right now. Thank you. Okay. Any questions on the report? Uh, yes, yeah, so what you're saying is you had a $4 million shortfall in yes. revenue? Okay. Yeah. Was that the extent of the shortfall? Yes. Okay. And we've managed expenses down to that level in the current year. You have? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. Right. So you've actually reduced your operating budget to account for the $4 million? Uh, the spending. We reduced our spending to okay. account, yes. Good. We had a fairly, just so you know, we, we had a fairly large contingency to this year that, that had most, uh, a large part to do with keeping uh, the spending down. How do you expect to, and what, what do you expect to happen for enrollment for the next coming year? Our, our projection right now is based on a decrease of about 2 to 3 uh, percent. We, we were up, what, what, we're sort of on that brink because in the fall we were up about 2.5 percent. In the spring we were down, then we took that bigger jump of about 10 mm -hmm. percent in the summer. So, uh, the sum piece was a financial aid matter. The yeah. feds changed yes. the rules on financial aid. I, I suspect we will be level. We have budgeted for a slight decrease to be conservative so that we're not planning on money that hadn't come in yet. Okay. okay. If, we are, if we are level or better, we can manage very easily the, the incremental cost going up. They're nowhere near as hard as managing incremental going costs going down. So that's, we've been very conservative this year on our budget projection. Yes. Mr. Chairman, we have them in BC order. I'd like to present the operating budget so that the tuition and fees discussion falls out from that, okay? So fine. I'm going to juggle these yes, two sir. if yeah. it's okay with you, okay? Uh, Doug, okay. let's go to, yeah. Um, Doug and I are going to go back and forth. Uh, if you recall last month, I took this literally from the governor's budget message. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And, it, you know, this is the word of our, our <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> chuckling because I, I, I know this is a tough issue for everybody, but the governor asked that they should be designed to improve learning, enhance services, target toward higher completion and placement rates, or to expand or improve programs that are tied to workforce needs. Thank you, governor. That is our budget. Um, 
and, and I don't mean to be frivolous about this, um, you know, the accountability process, uh, you know, everything we're presenting to you falls into those, those ranges as we go forward. Yep. Uh, so that as we, uh, as you have a chance to follow up with the governor, and, and I'm going to ask for a budget, for a tuition increase, and, and he will ask you about that, but I want you to be able to tell him that we went right back to his message and, and where the money went is in fact in line with his guidance to you, okay? So I hope I am allowing you to have that conversation with him. One of the things that we wanted to do though is, is based on some feedback that, that we got, is to, to talk a little bit about enrollment growth history. And, and part, of our, part of our issue today is n not so much that we need, look, we need the money from last year to this year, but over time we have eroded. And what I'm trying to do is I think with the adoption of this budget, we will have our resources much better aligned. Last year we, s we focused on instruction and faculty. This year we focused on student services intake and, and support. I think with this budget we would align ourselves uh, but no, we didn't get anywhere near 71% um, fee or, or revenue increases over a period of time. Huh? Well, well, how much did your operating budget grow, say, for the last four years? Who? Uh, cumulative, probably 15% or so. I'm, I'm uh, Factoring in tuition because we had virtually no state dollars. Yeah, no, any growth uh, has been. In fact, we had tuition. cuts in state dollars, so anything we got was would have been tuition or enrollment growth. Um, one of the one of the issues starting back in that 2008 2009 year, where where you really start seeing the uptick, was we were cutting at that point because state revenue was dropping and people were coming back to school. So we we cut our position substantially in those first couple of years. And, and absorb the workload. Uh, the only thing that went up, of course, were instruction, direct instructional costs. Um, it really wasn't um, until last year, a little bit the year before, that we were able to start putting some of the resources back in. When we did this chart, it was actually just before the summer term, and we were, at that point, we were flat projecting into 12-13, but now we're, as, you, as I've said before, we're seeing actually a down, a little downtick. So uh, it's relevant to the budget discussion and what we're going to talk about as far as reallocating some resources simply because uh, there, there's been a, a tremendous increase in the workload that we've not only absorbed with existing staff, but in reductions over those first two years. So, Well, let me make sure I understand. Are you proposing that your operating budget went up 15 percent, but enrollment activity went up 30 percent, so you have more than been good stewards of the money? In other words, you, you're getting more, do more bang for the buck? Uh, Across the board, absolutely. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that's okay. A, that's by way of background. Here's yep. here's the budget, and and you see us. Then, if you go back to the governor's words, okay, we mm -hmm. we reallocated nearly a million dollars in vacant and and largely mid-level or back office positions, and moved them almost without exception, to frontline direct student contact positions. So that was, number one was to realign the resources, get them closer to students, um, and, and to help execute the plans that we have put together. And you see the financial aid support, you see um, uh, the, the Midtown growth, uh, 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 learning resource support specialists. Those are people who help students outside of class in the, the libraries and learning centers. These are people who touch students every day. So that was part one was to reallocate those vacant positions, realign almost a million dollars worth of, of internal resources. <coughs> We had a number of, uh, of increases that uh, I would argue uh, we, we can bring them back in. I, I know the health plan is something that we, we monitor very closely. Um, uh, we'll, we're going to schedule a special workshop with the board on that because I think all of you can bring some, mm -hmm. some ideas. You just approved the career classification adjustments, so that was uh, 135, I think I said 125. 
Um, dual enrollment expansion, again, reaching out to make sure that, that we continue to pull kids through high school into college. Uh, and then we have budgeted 127000 for growth if we need it, but we have not put it out there yet. So if we go on the upside, we already have the money in the budget to handle additional sections. That's that 2% differential. Okay, that's where we're holding that money. Can I uh, ask Please. you a question? I'm, 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 I'm concerned about your health plan. So what's, <laughs> what exactly well, we is going are. on? <laughs> well, you may recall last, last month I, uh, when we put these numbers up, uh, started planning in February. We have seen, since we changed our plan, some, some significant improvements in our, in our bottom line in that plan. In fact, uh, as of last month, our uh, reserve was up over a million dollars year to date from January. Our, our plan year starts January, so it's, it's looking better. Uh, I certainly hope that we don't need that money. Okay. But we'll, as Dr. Law said, we'll bring a complete view of our health plan uh, at another meeting and show you all the details of it. So when you say you hope you don't need the money, what are the, as you yeah. look at the numbers, what is the indication of how much you'll actually, you think you're going to need? Well, at the time we did this projection, our, our claims were, were going up at about a 15% or so rate. With this change since January, we've seen not only a level but a decline, I think uh, probably closer to 5 to 7%. So if that continues, if it's not just a, you know, a blip on the radar, if, it, if that trend continues, then I would anticipate that we won't need all of that or only, maybe perhaps only a portion of it. All right. Uh, when you say all or a portion, do you mean half? I would guess what? Uh, I would hope that if, if it stays about, about the 5 to 7 percent trend that we would need maybe at least half of that. But As, as we were projecting, I mean, we were, we were the, the curve was clearly in the wrong direction mm -hmm. and, the, and the magnitude of the curve was to after we made the changes in January to the, to the HSAs and we increased the employee contribution to their, their own cost, we have another one for January, we think that number is coming down very quickly. We, we probably need to sit back and realign it again. We haven't done that yet. We wanted to make sure we had enough money in the budget to handle the next year if necessary. I don't think we'll need anywhere near a million too. But I have no idea what's going to happen with health care either. I, I simply don't know. We have stopped the directional problem. We are stable where we are. We just don't know what the increased cost is going to be for January when, when the providers, when we renew the contracts. What, uh, when you said five to seven, you're not talking about a five to seven increase per month, are you? I, no, I, I was just talking about the trend, the overall trend. Okay. Looks like it's going to level out around five to seven so percent. And I wasn't speaking of the cost of medical either. I was talking strictly about our our increase in, in, the, in the frames, we're not sure what the actual cost of, you know. We have details on that, though. And, and yeah, we, I have. If you want. Um, we, we just I'd like to look at it. I, yeah. I won't have time today. Yeah, right. Yeah. right. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see we'll that. We'll bring up. the detail next, okay. next time. Okay. Okay, so those are the operating increases. Um, you know, the key strategic areas of the budget, now, you know, these aren't all new dollars. These are redeployed and, and re is, uh, you see us, that we've moved 3.3. .3, so, uh, you know, we have detail on each of these, uh, but there again, that's the big faculty position that we brought forward from last year's budget to this. So 2 million of the 3 million is, is increased faculty for that, that, that we had discussed. Um, you see uh, uh, the frontline student services. You see the learning uh, uh, services support. So this is this is the intake process, the advisement process, the counseling process, the career counseling process, the financial aid process. Everything that has to do with student success, we have redeployed 3.3 million dollars for that. Any questions, guys? More members? Um, well, yeah, on the previous comment? slide, what, what was the faculty enhancement? Well, last, uh, well, last year, we, uh, when I got here, we made a two-year plan for hiring faculty. And we, we had the money uh, in the budget as an expense item yes. this year. So we actually had the money in this year's budget for next year's faculty. And we're simply showing that we're moving it into the faculty lines now, OK? But um, we, we did a, a, a review, not unlike the, uh, the career. Where did we need positions? Where had we not 
kept up with the growth? Where did we need some realignment? And I think we did 40 or 50 faculty positions over two years. We couldn't do it all in one year. This literally, though, moves the money into the budget. We had, we had escrowed the money to handle this, the phase two, which is next year's uh, implementation. We hired those folks for, for next year. So uh, that was a planned expenditure. I'm just showing it as an impact for where our resources are going to land, right? The, your, your, the money follows your values, and we had put a great deal of money into the instructional part. Um, I, I'm trying to think. That's the I think uh, yeah. That that's it. We brought the board a list uh, in October, November, two years ago, of saying this is for two-year plan. This is how we're going to get ourselves back in line with with mm -hmm. that enrollment growth. Right. That money was part of our contingency for this year that, that is now moved up into personnel. There's actually only about a little over 500000 in new spending in the proposed budget. The rest is reallocation and, and allocation of, the, of last year's con or this year's contingency. Um, th these are just the, the, some of our productivity enhancement tools. I mentioned these last month um, that, that we put uh, about 100000 into our college experience uh, program, uh, about uh, 50000 into clock hour financial aid automation, which is going to help us on the non-credit financial aid side, uh, a, about 20000 to a transfer evaluation module for the, the registrar, uh, uh, registrar's office, and then the software we've discussed a couple times about the early alert uh, management system. Only about 16 of that is recurring, uh, and then about 53000 into business intelligence support. On, on go back on that one, Doug. Just mm -hmm. I just I don't want to go too fast. We we've okay. got several things on there. Every student will have a learning plan. That is the one you see at twelve o'clock. So that is being unfolded <laughs> as we speak. Uh, there are some additional. We have a, a planned expansion in August and a uh, a planned expansion and and enhancement release in January. So. Um, every student will have a learning plan, and that is the cost of, of doing that. The other, though, I don't want to go too fast here. That clock hour financial aid, that goes oh, back yeah. to what the go back to the governor's words. This allows us now to reach and to provide certification training where there are jobs. This is what we will use to provide financial aid for people who are not credit hour programs in, say, manufacturing, many of the law enforcement mm -hmm. areas, some of the IT areas, but we can now compete and attract students who can get financial aid, and they get then a certificate that will get them hired. So um, a, a new phase for us, but for 50000 it's a very important strategic jump. I was looking for J.C. Brock because he specifically brought that issue up. That's a big mm -hmm. issue for you, wasn't it, J.C.? Uh, we were losing folks to Hillsborough County. I'm, am I right about that? Yes, Jared, correct. Okay. So that's a big, uh, that'll help us a tremendous amount. What about the early alert case management? Isn't that something, uh, weren't you just <coughs> automating an email system to let? Um, yeah, it's a, I, I, we may have misspoken. The email system is kind of the front end of that. The real problem, the real thing is the case management part of that to to both get the, get the advisors and now that system also goes to the academic advisors in things. So it's a, v it's a little more complex than simply a quick email to say, find the student, call them, okay? Mm -hmm. They fall under a case management approach where an advisor then has them under their wing. Th these are students who need our help, and, and we need to make sure all of the help shows up. So in fact, that's literally what they're doing today is the training to, to talk about how all the pieces fit together on that. Um, the success of a student was tied to yeah, contact or something you know, like and, that, right? And I, I mean, I'd, times they were contacted up front. I, I, I get it that making a call. We're talking about thousands of students, though, that need that help, that are dropping out of courses. And, and to do it in anything that's a more casual system won't get us. I think the throughput will be very low unless we have a, a more rigorous defined system where the system helps manage the, the interactions, okay? I, I think there's a business environment on that. Okay, so how do you, let's say you spend the money, how do you, next year, how do you go back and look and determine whether or not the money was appropriately spent? So what benchmark are you expecting to, to actually? Oh, I, I think we'll be able to, uh, I mean, you know, the first and foremost is order of magnitude. How many students did we actually touch and, and everything else? Secondly, we ought to be able to see 
students who stayed in the course rather than dropped out. I think we should see an, a, a, an improvement in the student success rates of students in those key courses where, we, where we're rolling this out. Uh, we're rolling it out on a pilot basis for students who are in two or more remedial courses. They're the first group. So these are the highest need students that we have. Uh, and I think we, uh, we're clearly going to track to see that we got back to those students very quickly. Uh, the other group under that would be African American males, uh, veterans, to be sure that those are, are folks that are doing it. I think, Mr. North, that we can, in fact, give you a, a response that said, before we did this system, this was the success of students staying in classes. After we did the system, this was the success of students staying in classes. If we don't get them through these early courses, they fall, we never see them again. Well, we see them 20 years later and their financial aid's all messed up. Um. <laughs> yeah, that's a lie. I mean, seriously. Any more questions or comments? I, 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 uh, you, go, you go ahead. You go, go ahead. First, yeah. no, all go right. Ahead. So on the uh, on the 391, this is part of the. Is would you consider this to be the bulk of the additional 523 in operating budget increase? Uh, some of this is coming from capital improvement, for, but for the most part, I would say that yes. Okay. No, I would. Some of this technology I, 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 feed I would too. not. I would. I would say you have to go back to the other slides. The bulk of the increase is for personnel on the front lines talking to students. Okay. That I, I know. That's yeah. that's well. what I'm trying to. I have. I think that's our highest priority is to make sure that the intake process, the counseling process, the advisement process, the career counseling process, that has to be more robust than it currently is today. And that's where I think we are directing the new resources to those kinds of things. So we've redirected some and we've yep. added some new. So you had 3.3 million in additional expenses for frontline. Mm -hmm. Then we have this 400,000. Is that right. correct? Yeah, I just want to be careful. The 3.3 .3 is a realignment of a lot of resources, right? It's not all new money. Right. Well, I'm okay. Just no, trying, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying. To trying yeah. yeah. So right. the, once we get the 3.7, then that translates somehow into a $500,000 increase I get, in operating. Right. Okay. 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 Is that right? Yeah, I'm not trying to argue with you. I, I think we're no, okay. No, you can argue. I, yeah, I no, I'm, I'm <laughs> saying that the 3.3 .3 <laughs> right is where <laughs> after we, we took existing realignments plus new resources and we are in in fact identifying 3.3 million dollars in additional resources that go to the student success the completion the success those kinds of things we have an additional 400,000 391,000 that provides the technology so those people can do their jobs better okay so there's a there's this kind of a if you're going to do it th there has to be uh, obviously technology undergirds all of what we do um, but I don't want to mislead anyone. Our whole focus is to send more resources to the front line to make sure that students don't fall through the cracks before we have a chance to, to help them. And that's, that's the, the basis of the budget. You made mention that uh, it's not all new money. Yes, what, sir. what percentage is new money? 500,000 is about half. About mm -hmm. half? half about half? Yeah, it's very little, very, very small. Oh, okay. So, uh, I actually, I didn't follow that. What do, what do you mean by half? What? Our, our budget's that going up by yeah. $500,000. Right. That's the total half amount. Half of that is okay. new money. Now and half is realigned money. Is that what you're no, saying? No, that, the, the, the bottom line at the budget, yeah. with the tuition increase, we go up by $500,000, sure. okay? Right. Along the way, though, we have redeployed <laughs> millions of dollars worth of realignment to get the resources where we want them. So we, we, I just want to be careful. So when you say redeploy, you mean reallocate, right? Reallocate. reallocate. Okay. That's correct. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So if you go back to those positions, somebody was a mid-level person and we, that position went vacant. We either didn't rehire or on July 1 it's vacant and we're now moving it so that it has a different job at the college serving students. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we had almost a million dollars worth of those. Uh, and then, candidly, we took some of the new money that would come from a tuition increase to add yet a few more positions like that. I mean, I, I couldn't get them all realigned fast enough to, uh, to, to do the kinds of implementation that we wanted. So what is the increase that you're asking for? 3.2 million, 3.5 million, what was it? The tuition the in increase. Oh, uh, it's what, about three point. Seven, about 3.7, uh, give or take. So we'll show it to you when we get to that slide. Tuition increase, right? Yes. That's tuition, which is percentage-wise, is what 
What? Doug, go ahead to the tuition yeah, slide ahead. here, okay? Yeah, okay. Well, let me flip through. Step yeah. past that, okay. Yeah. You want to jump all Oops, the way through jump, to the... Jump back, though. Go back, go back. Uh, Mr. Yeah. North, I think this is... You, you see what happens with... Look at tuition and out-of-state fees on the top line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For all practical purposes, they're, they're the same. So we are keeping the level of resources that we had last year in total, but redeploying them to student services. Does that, right. am I, I'm trying right. to explain it several different ways. It does, but the question I have is that if you know mm -hmm. you didn't hit 61.7 last year, you hit 58, right? What makes right. you think you're gonna have, uh, why, aren't you, why wouldn't you think you're still compounding the problem? Um, because we lowered our expectation. That, that is, with the lowered enrollment levels and the tuition increase gets us to 61.8. Right. Right, so it's actually a... So the tuition increase actually The tuition it. increase is filling mm -hmm. that hole, okay? But I want to be careful. That's not the way I would want it to be described, okay? <laughs> that, that's the way the spreadsheet lines up. But as far as the operation of the college, there's a very big shift of resources that, that's part of that. Right, and I, I think that's probably the right way to look at it. I mean, it's obvious that you've had a tremendous growth in, uh, in student enrollment, so, and you didn't increase your overall infrastructure to match that. It looks like you're getting uh, people to do more with what they currently had back five years ago. So I get that. Right. So the question I have is, is any increase in operating budget appropriate at this time? with a soft uh, tuition. So that's the question I have. I yeah. mean, is there 500000 that you could carve out of this budget so that we would have a zero increase for the year and still be oh, able to? Oh, okay. Um, I mean, well, I, I'm just asking. The, the budget, as it stands right now, does have about a $500,000 contingency in it. So, so, what, yeah. so reduce the tuition by some amount to make that number zero. Is that your... I, you know, yeah, I think that that's be, probably, that, the, I think that's okay. the right message to send. Now, it does okay. cause you a little bit of a problem with your contingency, but that doesn't mean you can't create a side pocket later on uh, right. in order to, you have a number of projects that you're not funding at this point. Right. So, so you're me, saying come, come back some, in the course of the year if yeah, we can't I, fund I, it? I, yeah, just come we back need to and figure it out. And, well, but I mean, send a message at zero today. You got two ways you can look mm -hmm. at the way sure. in which we're asking for an increase. I think the more positive way would be to say, you know, that, Zero. It's a z yeah. We have a zero increase in operating budgets, and we're not asking for a tuition increase for that. Sure. So I think that makes the most amount of sense. So, if uh, Doug, what? Uh, let's just go slow here and do a little back of the envelope calculation. So, if we go from sixty, well, five percent increase is going to get us four million dollars. Is that yeah, a little less? Right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And we need. Three million five rather than four, right? Right. right. So we would pull out five hundred thousand dollars, which would be five over four. Would be so if we did a four and a half percent increase, it'll probably zero that not that number. Is I that think a, so. Okay. Just that now, that'd be about right. Right, and then and then I think the story we say is we didn't increase our operating budget at okay. a time okay. when you have declining enrollment. Great which guidance. Is, because we can it do is, that. It is. Yeah. It is and counterintuitive to increase your operating I, budget I, when you have I a get. declining enrollment. If That's fair, and, and we could always come back if we need. And the I'm, I'm really comfortable because it's a very if conservative enrollment projection. Well, if, if, we, if, if, it, if enrollment keeps going down, we've we got a different problem. We're, yeah. not, we're not talking about rounding out tuition increases at that point. If it's, but if but it's you could always come back and take trend. some of that, Dr. Law, in the course of the year. If there's a problem, okay. we could come back and we, we could review it again. Right. So right. then a the recommendation. Right? That's what I believe is okay. the right way to do it. That's fair. Oh, I'm just one guy. No, that's, so. uh, that, that's very helpful. That's a good message. I that think is a very good helpful message. to the public. It is a good message. Uh, so, Doug, we would, our recommendation essentially then would be 4.5%, and that gives us no increase in the operating budget, exactly. would be the, the, exactly. the parallel right. dialogues. That's right. right. That, that, that's very good. And, and that's the dialogue I would start with is we're not increasing our operating <laughs> budget. <Right. Yeah>. <laughs> 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 yes. yes, sir. So. <laughs> Um, okay. Okay. So, Doug, uh, fast forward us then to okay. the um, uh, to the tuition, tuition slide. Okay, and we just wanted to give you an idea of what the real numbers look like, just so you you know we're not playing with percentages. Can you believe this? And and yeah. by the way, that 161 is going up by 11 percent. So that number is going to be that's 178. Current, current, yeah. Wouldn't you hate to be on that board? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if the governor calls all those guys first, <laughs> they'll never get to you guys. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree. And, and again, I, you know, nobody wants costs to go up, but my, uh, my $106 is still a... It's uh, a bargain. I, I think students are getting a good yeah, deal. A the good deal. quality of what we're doing, that the greatly enhanced uh, student services, uh, the success agendas can get funded. I, I appreciate your support on that. So that that's our recommendation to you. So you're going to change uh, from five percent to, to a four, four and, and a half. half. Four. Yeah. Uh, okay. Dr. Law, um, th th there's one qualifier on that. The upper division fee is set is was mandated to us at five percent. So unless that changes at Tallahassee, we we, we could not change that, yeah. but we could change the yeah. lower division. The, the upper division is legislatively determined. determined. Okay, so uh, better yet, I mean, I like the politics on that even better. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. That's what, yeah. 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 Okay, so so we would yeah. where we have the discretion, we will change that to four and a half percent and and move forward. Uh, we'll norm whatever else has to get normed from that. Okay, so that's that's really good guidance. Thank you. That's really. Thank you, good Doug. Law for ex Doug, thank you for our excellent okay. report. Um, Right. So I guess we're going to take up. We need a motion on that. Yeah, on we're going to take up items G, okay. 1, A, B, C, and D, and also 2, A, B, and C. And also the motion should include that we're changing from a 5% increase to a 4.5% increase in the tuition. Go ahead, Mr. North. You're the second. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Fine made the motion. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. North <laughs> properly second the motion. <laughs> All in favor, by aye. 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 Thank None you. opposing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our no, motion. Really good guys. I'm going to now open the uh, public hearing for the proposed changes to the Board of Trustees manual. Are there any speakers? With no speakers, I'm going to ask that we make a motion to accept item H. I'm looking for a motion to accept item H. Uh, a motion to accept. Second. It's been properly moved and second. All in favor by saying aye. Aye. None opposing. We're on to the president's report. Oh, I got to close the public hearing and we're on to the president's report. Uh, I'll, I'll waive uh, my items. We have, uh, you know that we have to convene very briefly as the collegiate high school, right? Yes, so I, which I, um, I'm in trouble. Uh, two quick things. We, I mentioned the chance. We are hosting the uh, governor's Blue Ribbon University panel here on the 23rd, 26th, 26th of July. 200 of, uh, of the leading citizens for the governor's uh, Blue Ribbon University panel will be here using our collaborative lab. So we're, uh, we'll, we'll give you a heads up on that. 26th. 26th, okay, and again, it may be a chance to come out and shake a few hands okay. and meet some folks. Good, thank you very much. Um, Mr. Chairman, that's, that's all I have. I would prefer that we go ahead and do the, uh, Any, uh, the collegiate high school and move on. Anything from the board members before we move on to the no, I appreciate all the work you yeah. do. I mean, it's obvious Thank every you. month this is a tremendous strain. So Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Fine? I just want to appreciate the, the, the business, uh, how you've prepared uh, you. all of us and took the time and in individual meetings to ramp us through, and especially being a new board member. I appreciate the time spent. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you Dr. Lodge. It's a tough agenda we had today. We got through Thank it fairly quickly. Thank you for all the work. Thank you, staff, for all the work, the hard work you've done on this. Um, are there any future agenda items that we need to talk about? If none, our uh, next meeting date is July 17th here at the Epi Center. Um, and I move to adjourn our board meeting. Now we convene as We the convene as the Collegiate High School. And we'll be doing uh, short it's not the Board of here. Trustees. It's called something else. We governing are the Governing Board. Governing Board. Governing board. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to update you on the past year of the Collegiate High School. Um, I'd like to share a few highlights, if I may. One of the things that we focus on with our students each year is making sure they're aware of scholarship opportunities and um, encouraging them to apply for those scholarship opportunities. And our seniors last year earned more than $2.2 million in scholarships. Wow. We were really happy with that. Community service is a cornerstone of our leadership program at SPCHS, 
and our seniors over the four years of their high school career gave more than 15,000 hours of community service to various organizations in Pinellas County. I'm especially proud that one of our seniors took the leadership role in the Junior Achievement Initiative on the St. Petersburg Gibbs campus and our students served more than 45 Pinellas County School elementary classrooms. So we're really happy with that. She has already trained her replacement for next year. So we have a rising senior who mm -hmm. will continue that initiative. Another significant achievement this year was our Interact Club received Rotary's Changemaker Award. And we are only in our second year of inception. So I was very proud of our students and our faculty advisor. They did many outreach initiatives, such as Jeans for Teens, a Casa Clothes Drive, and a Canned Food Drive. They also work collaboratively with the St. Petersburg Gibbs campus and Rotary to provide a Toys for Tots drive at the holiday time and we had a tremendous outpouring of resources to share with our community. So we're very happy with that. They also did several beach cleanup events. SPCHS enjoys a very strong partnership with the West St. Pete Rotary Club and we certainly appreciate all the support they give our Interact Club. They also afford our students the opportunity to do a study abroad program through their youth exchange program as well as participate in their seminar for tomorrow's leaders. So we're very pleased with that partnership. Finally, I'm very pleased that John Hesting, one of our teachers, is one of the SPC instructors leading the high school Rome trip. And we have 10 of our students leaving in a week to have that wonderful life-changing experience. And we certainly appreciate uh, the college offering our students that opportunity. This senior class was the very first class that had all three years of our leadership program. And the capstone project is a online portfolio. Wow. Our hope is that this will be a foundation piece for our students in learning a little bit about themselves. I'm not going to walk you through the entire portfolio due to time, but they have talked about uh, their career plan, a little bit about themselves. They've reflected on the skills that they've gleaned through St. Petersburg College and their time at SPCHS. They have taken a look at the service leadership and how it benefited those they were trying to serve as well as how it benefited them. Um, they've attached artifacts as well, if you uh, scroll down. So it's a nice foundational piece. We hope as they continue their educational journey, they will continue to add to this portfolio. They do own it because it is online, and that it will be very useful to them as they enter the workforce. And then finally, in the past, trustees have been curious about where our seniors are going. I'm very pleased that six of our seniors are staying right here at St. Petersburg College. And we always have a few that come back to St. Petersburg College. They really appreciate uh, the individualized instruction they get from the faculty here and the excellent learning. And so we always get a few that go away and then come back. But we were very pleased uh, that we have six of our students staying right here. Ms. Metz, you only had two wayward souls that went to Florida State, huh? <laughs> Valedictorian well, and salutatory. <laughs> <laughs> have you been? Uh, have you been showing up Mr. Burke is not here classes? to see that. <laughs> <laughs> um, some of the notable colleges there that our students were especially excited about were Rollins University in Miami. Uh, Mrs. Deseppe, our administrative specialist, her daughter got a four-year ride to University of Miami and we were just ecstatic for her and, and very proud of, of her accomplishments. And then we have two students who are doing the Rotary Youth Exchange. One will be in Slovakia and one in Belgium. Wow. Nice. It's fun. And now Dr. Call is going to share a little bit of data with you. So we'd like to start off our data with looking at who our students are. As you can see, if you look at the demographic information, um, our school is representative of the average of Pinellas County Schools. Um, we pull from all over the county, not just Pinellas County Schools. We have, um, we have homeschool students that come directly to us, and we also have students that come from private schools. So we are representative um, of the county. Um, I'm sorry, I have a question. Yes. Did I understand, uh, you have 70 seniors? 70, we had 71 seniors, correct. And 70 seniors received $2.2 million in? That's correct. 
They do. What we do is what all the high schools do. Um, they take a look at all the dollars that were awarded. They don't necessarily use all that money, oh, okay? okay? But that's right. the way it's calculated at the high school. And so they'll take a look at all the awards that they were given, and we count that, as does Pinellas County Schools. But then, of course, they don't go everywhere where they've been marketing awarded number, money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we do have 71 seniors. Um, those 71 seniors, 100% um, of them graduated with their high school diploma. So we're very proud of them. Also, 93% of them have um, graduated with their AA. Now this year we're anticipating and we're hoping to get that number up to 100%. So we have um, five of our students that are currently in summer classes and if they, they do that then we'll be up to 100%, um, which is our, our goal every year. So um, we'd be especially proud of um, the school and, and those students that um, met that goal. Um, one thing that we, we talk about when we talk about the school and the perception is that when people come to visit is that our students are always the cream of the crop, the best of the best when they come to us, and that they're all you know, 4.8 GPAs and perfect scores in their SATs, and that's not the case. Um, if you look at this graph, you see what students, um, how they score, uh, this is on the college placement test, when they come to us. So you see last year's graduating class was just over 10% college ready when they came to us. This year's graduating class was less than 10% um, college ready when they came to us. So our teachers, our 10th grade teachers, they have just one year to get them college ready. And so we work diligently with the students to get them ready. Um, and you can see the areas where they need to work on. You can see 40% are ready in English. And then uh, in between 10 and 20% are ready in math. So they have a lot of work to do to get them ready. And then you see the support services that we're able to put in place for our students. So not only are they ready, but they're successful in those college classes. So that um, purple line right now, it's at that 93%, but we're going to hope that that goes up and that we'll move from less than percent college ready to A, college ready, then B, successful in college with an AA degree. And important to all schools, of course, is FCAT data. And so um, we've done very well in the FCAT data, and there have been some significant changes in the last couple of years regarding FCAT. First one is math. There's no longer an FCAT math test. It's now just end of course exams. And so um, this year was the first year of the geometry end of course exam, and we had 100% uh, of our students um, pass the geometry end of course exam. In fact, every student that took the end of course exam got a B or higher. So they did very well in that, given that it was the first year. And Mr. Walter, our math um, instructor, was a little nervous. He never you know, experienced the end of course exam. And so he did a great job with those students. And those students did a great job. Um, the last couple of years, we've really focused on reading and writing as part of our um, school improvement plan. As you can see, those efforts, reading across the curriculum, writing across the curriculum, have really paid off um, in those two areas. We jumped from 74 to 89% um, with a three above in reading and another jump in writing. So we're going to continue those um, <coughs> and hopefully get those 100% um, across the board. Our ultimate goal, of course, is to meet our mission, to have every single student have a 100% graduation rate both for the high school and the AA. And we're continually refining what we're offering in our classrooms, looking at our electives, looking at our instructional strategies, and of course partnering with the SPC faculty to try to reach, reach that goal. Any questions and highlights? Any questions, board? Okay. Good job. Thank you. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is the proposed budget for next school year. Um, it is essentially uh, the same as last year in terms of the total amount. Um, one of the things that is a little different is our capital outlay funds have been slashed in about half. And so what we uh, chose to do when I worked with the uh, accountant was to be conservative in our capital outlay estimation of how much those funds will be. And so we did take some money from our budget stabilization fund. Um, but the bottom line is just about the same as last year. And of course, we are asking for your approval. Now, we have new 
board members, this money comes to us from the Pinellas County School Board, right? They, yes, sir, it does. We, we, we bill them back based on our enrollment levels, and they pass on, help me out, 85% or 95%? 98% because we're high performing. Okay. Right, okay, so this, this money comes to us from the school district to pay for these, the education of these students. I'm sorry, we need a motion to approve the collegiate high school budget. So moved. It's been moved second. and properly second. All in favor, motion by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, and then this motion passes, so we approve your budget. Thank Ms. you very Metz, much. Thank you. And thank you both for all you do. Very this well is a shining example. School. Yeah, this is a shining example of what you can do. And I like the fact that you've shown that these young people do not come to you the best and brightest. Um, we take them from all walks, shapes, wherever. And if they're committed to, to the program, that they can make it through. And that, that's very impressive. Very impressive. Thank you very much. That certainly is the joy, is to take them from all walks of life and give them this wonderful opportunity. It certainly is aligned with our college mission. Thank you. Thank you. If there's no other business, we'll adjourn the meeting.